You know, when I go back and think of when I first got interested in psychiatry 40 years ago, what drew me in was the ability to understand people deeply and, and to connect with them and to, to, to somehow share in the magic of what went on between people and to be able to create that healing response that Dave has so wonderfully elucidated. But you know, increasingly over the last 40 years, I've become, I think, disheartened. And I've gotten to the point now where I think that much of what's going on in modern psychiatry is actually harming patients and actually we're creating harm, and, and I'll talk about that. What it has really convinced me is that if we're going to create a new method for understanding people and working with people that I think really honors that core principle that I think is, is often at the heart of uh, holistic medicine, integrative medicine, is first of all, do no harm, primum non nocere. And I think we've lost sight of that, and I think we've lost sight of that in, in many different ways. And really what I'm hoping that we can do is that we, here in this room, can become the new psychiatry. I think we have to role model for medicine a way out of this. So what is integrative psychiatry? I think that integrative psychiatry could be defined as it's the equally sound, ecologically sound care of the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. And ecological would be in that sort of broader definition that I gave you a couple days ago where we look at all spheres of the person's life including their relationship with their practitioner. That's one of the spheres in any person's life. So what does ecological in scope mean? We look at the person as an ecosystem. They're interconnected and interdependent. And so this is really echoing sort of the, the concepts that I presented earlier in ecology. It, it's important to really look at the myth of narrow treatments, the silver bullet phenomena. And I think the more you can get away from that, the better it is. And to think that when a person comes to you suffering from a mood issue, that a pharmacological agent is going to resolve their problems is, is really very short-sighted and I don't think honors the true nature of our being. And we also have to look at, as, as Nan Sudak pointed out, the precautionary principle, that we really have to be careful of any powerful intervention that may have ripple effects that go well beyond what we've uh, come to know. And then finally, we also need to understand homeostasis and stability, and that when people are in a, a stable point in their current presentation to you, they have a homeostasis about that. And unless you significantly alter some of the underlying imbalances, they're not gonna move to another uh, stable but healthier place in their sort of life balance. People are unique and multidimensional. We need to educate, support, and motivate, and that's just really an invaluable part of who we are. We need to sort of, I think, embrace what we learned from Dave Rakel this morning and really know how to use that in our interactions with patients and how to embrace that and how to embody it. We need to avoid simple thinking and uh, one-dimensional approaches. We need to go beyond that and toward a, a, a ecological approach to the patient. We need to strive for balance and harmony, look for imbalances where they occur in patients' lives and uh, begin to address them. And that's really the foundation for this ecological approach. And we need to embrace the complexity and potential in each patient that we serve.